Hey. Hey. How are you doing? Great. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm a little bit, um, little, I haven't had enough sleep. <laughs> I'm all right. Uh, First, firstly, do you mind introducing yourself and telling me where you're from? Because I'm pretty sure you're from the UK, right? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm from the UK, I'm from Essex. I was born in Harwich and I grew up in Colchester in Essex. But I left Essex about eight years ago, maybe more, maybe nine or ten, and I've been travelling around the world living in different countries. So if anyone's watching and they're wondering what my accent's all about, that's why, because when I've lived somewhere, I've really immersed myself in their culture and their language and I've just kind of let my own sort of merge into theirs. Yeah. So um, now it's hard for me to really say like I'm from England. I kind of feel like I'm from everywhere, and but I'm home now in the UK. Love that. Yeah, because I we we've spoken a bit over Instagram voice notes before, haven't we? And obviously, I've yeah. like watched a lot of your content, and sometimes I'm like, is she is she from the UK? Or like, there's some now and again. I'm like, there's a bit of a South African twang in there. Um, it's so um, funny because it's the places I've not been to. I've not been to Australia. I've not been to South Africa and and America. And those are the three kind of like, is that where you're from? Is that where you've traveled? I lived in Italy and Spain for years and years. So maybe. I don't know. I don't maybe. know. But so what, what took you on your travels? Ah, I decided. So it kind of definitely links with the diagnosis. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and I was at university. Um, up in York studying philosophy I believe and I think I just stumbled on an advertisement that was like you can teach English abroad and I was like yeah I don't know if I can teach English abroad but then I was like it kept you know how Facebook adverts are like tailored to you and mm-hmm. it just kept coming and I was like this is freaking me out of it and I was working so much I was studying I was working I was probably working like if you like work in all ways of working, like 60, 70 hours a week, you know, just like, go, go, go. I was exhausted. I was burnt out. I was with all the fibromyalgia flares. And, um, and I had a therapist at the time and we were chatting and I was like, I think I'm going to leave uni, you know, at least for a year, just get myself sorted out a bit. And she said, yes, like I'm going to organize this compassionate leave of absence for you. So you have a whole year and like sort it out and it just all fit together. And I was like, that's what I'll do. I'll go and teach English abroad. But that one year turned into five years. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I did attempt to go back to uni. I did the one year. I went back and I just realized I, I've evolved now to a point that um, I can't put myself in that box anymore of what other people maybe wanted from me or society wanted from me. I couldn't yeah. do that anymore. Yeah. Awesome. Love that. So you discovered that quite soon after your diagnosis then, did you? simultaneously all in the same moment I spoke to the doctor who diagnosed me he was a rheumatologist he just wanted me out of his office I love this story because it's so true he was just like shuffling his papers just wanting me to go it wasn't even a real diagnosis it was more just like I deal with arthritis and you don't have that so here's a leaf that on fibromyalgia and I was like look before I go and he's like trying to get me to leave he hasn't given me anything no treatment options no nothing just like like deal with it I was like, shall I go and teach English abroad? I've got no one to ask. I can't ask my parents. I can't ask my friends. I can't ask my tutors at uni. I'm asking you. And he was like, is it a hot country? And I was like, yeah, it's Vietnam. And he was like, yeah, I think think hot weather, pain, it'll it'll help and he was like so can you leave and I was like (laughs) okay and and that was all I had to go on and I was like not super spiritual at this point not really not at all in tune with myself like I am now with this sense of trust and intuition so I just had that to go on and I was like I'm gonna trust this as a sign because I could have seen any doctor Mm -hmm. in the UK you, you just see you know anyone who was available but I saw him and a different doctor could have said, no, stay in uni. What are you doing? Yeah. So I was like, okay. And I'm so grateful to him for that because then that led me to the next thing and the next thing, next thing and where I am now. Awesome. My, I, I received some um, sort of similar advice, but it was direct advice from my doctor instead of me having to be like, shall I do this? Yeah. It was he, when I had my first I period of sickness, um, it was like three months and he like highly encouraged me to 
go on holiday and I was like but I can't go on holiday can I because mm. you know I'm on sick and he's like it doesn't matter if you're on sick like you I think you need a holiday I think you need rest get away like I encourage you to do that and I was like oh, okay so I felt felt a bit weird and felt a bit like it was a bit naughty but having the doctor saying that I'm like wow mm. that's, that's medical advice I don't, I don't need to feel guilty about the fact that actually my body needs to go on holiday absolutely so for sure how so you said um uh, rheumatologist diagnosed you. yeah how did you how did you get to the point of seeing the rheumatologist do you mind sort of giving me a little mm-hmm. quick run through of how you got there and what your symptoms were how yeah why you started I would say it? yeah um I, I might be a bit forgetful on all the dates exactly but I yep. know it was something like um like I was 17 or 18 years old. So I'm 27 now. So we're going back 10 years when I started to get just pain in my glutes. And I was like, I'm working a lot. And I was like helping raise my sister's kids. And I was at college, um, high school, if Americans are watching and I'm working as a waitress. So I was doing a lot. So it was just like normal. And the doctor let me have some physiotherapy sessions for free, like one a week for half an hour. And she would only focus on the one glutes not even both glutes but like sometimes it was left and sometimes it was right and sometimes it was my leg and sometimes it was my arm and sometimes it was my shoulder and sometimes it, and then I was like doc I'm not sure about this um are you sure that we got this right is it just um I'm working a lot walking I walked everywhere I didn't have transport and I just and he was like no for sure it's just you work a lot you walk a lot you work until two in the morning and like the waitressing is walking around But then comes brain fog and then comes fatigue. I was mixing a lot between insomnia and then I don't know if there's a word for the opposite of insomnia, but I could just sleep through alarms. Um, I could sleep 16, 18 hours and just not, I could wake up, see that it was day and just go, nah. But I wasn't at that point depressed or diagnosed with anxiety, which came later. Mm -hmm. But at that point I was just, I could sleep more. Like, I think my body needs to sleep more and I could just sleep and sleep. So that obviously interfered with stuff. And so that pushed me to, I suppose, go to the doctor again. I didn't know anything about fibromyalgia and just list the different symptoms. But they started to, I think, put me down in hypochondriac circle Mm -hmm. or um, like, I feel like they might have highlighted that because I'm like, really painful periods, really painful headaches, really like unable to concentrate in college. And they were like, but look, you are from like this broken home and you have all this stuff going on and you're working, you don't have a lot of money. And they were, they were seeing what I also see now as an adult and like a self healer and in my coaching business that the lifestyle stuff, but I didn't want to hear that Mm because that wasn't give me the fix now, like give me what I need to do. Tell me what I need to do and, and give me a treatment option. And they weren't doing that for me. They were telling me to track my diet and notice any triggers, which I don't do in my coaching business, but um, it can be helpful for sure. And I just would, I was just uh, infuriated by it. And also I wanted someone to blame. This is interesting. So they, yeah, I, I came from, you could say a broken home and I left home at 16. And because I had so much unresolved resentment there, it was useful to have pain and symptoms and suffering to be like, you did this to me in some mm-hmm. way. This wasn't conscious. This was all like subconscious. And, um, and now look at that now, cause you kicked me out or I was 16. I was so young and nowhere to go and working and all this stuff. You somehow, and the you is not even one person. It's not my mom or my dad. It's just like the An experience. Itself. Yeah. Yes. You made this happen. And now I'm, all I've got to hold on to is the pain and suffering. Like that's what I've got. And that's what I'm going to hold on. That's my identity now. That's what I've got. So, but I was still holding out for something real, which um, I don't agree with this word anymore, but that was the mindset at the time. A real diagnosis, like a prolapse disc or like some sort of cancer even. Like I was looking for the real, give me the real thing, the scary thing. I want it so I can run home and tell my mom, look what you did, that you gave me this awful thing. And it wasn't coming, all my bloods were perfect. All my joints were great. All my 
you know, they did the, the pee sample, the poop sample, the blood, all the things were perfect. And, um, well, eventually it came back with IBS later down the line. But um, in this particular moment, we, it, the GP was like, all I can do now is move you on to um, like an arthritis kind of specialism, a rheumatologist. That's all, which is interesting. We don't have an autoimmune sort of area in, mm. in England. Uh, you'd think there'd be an auto, because arthritis is autoimmune. So you think there'd be an autoimmune expert who would be a bit of a nutritionist, a bit of a this, that, but we, I guess in the private healthcare maybe. But um, so, so I waited, I think 10 months to see this doctor. Wow. And um, so you'd, you'd already gone through quite a journey to get to this point, and then you've got another 10 months to wait before seeing. Yeah. The next... Oh, this is years. This is years. Yeah. Before I, I hadn't heard the word fibromyalgia yet, which is interesting because now I think, which is a good thing in a way, there's so much um, awareness that mm. somebody with these symptoms can actually find it and actually say to their own doctor, could it be fibromyalgia? I've heard this word, I've seen this word. Whereas yeah. back then there wasn't. And I it was, was still I think so new, wasn't it? Been... Ten yeah. years ago, like it, it was only. So I, I, I was quite similar. It was about, it was about ten years ago, eight years ago that I was diagnosed, and at that point, the doctor was telling me this is very, this is very new that people are starting to believe this is a mm. thing. It's only been around like fifteen years at that point. So mm. when, when I, when I hear someone's had a diagnosis like ten years ago, I'm like okay you've got a story let's <laughs> let's get into it because that, that wouldn't yeah. be like a straightforward situation so no but later, then at the, at the same time yeah at the same time it wasn't really a diagnosis like I'm sure now and especially in America there would be a doctor who specializes even in fibromyalgia mm. and and then um have a treatment plan for you and everything but this really was shuffling off the papers look it's not arthritis so that means in his mind, it's not degenerative because arthritis yeah. can be. So it was like, so I'm not your person and this isn't your, maybe you need a psycho psychologist, maybe you need this or that, maybe you're a hypochondriac, but I'm not your person. Like he didn't say this, but that was the impression. And still I am thankful now having come out the other end. And if I'd have known then what I knew now, I wouldn't have had to spend 10 years self-healing. I would, <laughs> would have done it in the six months that it took to, to self-heal eventually. But mm. it was all part of the path and part of the process. It was a long one, but mm. one worth taking. Yes, um, I was so young. Um, if someone had just said, which is all very spiritual and airy fairy, the answers are within you, like that I found when I went traveling, which was to teach English, which was nothing to do with my sole purpose. But in doing that, I found the people who then said to me, it's within you, it's within you, it's within you. And then I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> so is it through your travels that you came to find yoga then because i i found you on instagram um i think it was like i've got it in my head that it was like september last year that you and i connected on instagram and i found your um yoga for fibromyalgia on youtube and i was like wow this is brilliant <laughs> like because everybody everybody tells um anybody with fibro that yoga is the answer have you tried this have you tried this blah, blah, blah. Mm. and I get and understand why people are sick of hearing and being told Absolutely. that it's a, a, that it's an answer um mm -hmm. you know it's certainly not a cure but it's definitely a pain management uh, method that's effective but in my experience if you find the right person to teach you mm -hmm. because there's also so many different versions of yoga aren't there absolutely so, uh I've I've tried a few along uh through the years and there are some that I find a bit too aggressive and intense. Absolutely. Um, and I actually saw I saw a, uh, a video on your story. I think it was the other day of you sort of explaining that this type of yoga isn't for everybody. This type of yoga yes. isn't necessarily for this purpose. Um, but yeah, I was just so excited when I found somebody with fibro. Mm -hmm. putting out videos that is clearly like experienced and in tune with everything and find something that's effective helping other people so how did you get from being diagnosed and told being given like the nod from the rheumatologist to say yeah just get out of my office and go traveling <laughs> to to 
you know yourself now your business your yes. self-healing like give me give me that journey please because yeah. I'm fascinated by it yeah and um, and the yoga journey is so fascinating for me too because that's not where it ended up staying for me because although I am a yoga teacher yoga instructor and I would like to host classes retreats all of that kind of stuff the yoga really became a tool the tool is to reconnect with yourself this is like the aha spiritual thing it's not really about doing this to relieve the pain here like we can do that and I will guide people if they're coming to my classes or coming on YouTube or um like looking, saying to me, I have lower back pain and I want to do something for this lower back pain. I can give you a, I can give you a treatment plan. I can give you all. The, and I'm, I'm actually now in a two year yoga therapist course. Yoga therapy is different to a yoga teacher because I'm, I'm kind of legally up there with, um, what's the name? Physiotherapists. I'm mm -hmm. like up there with them. There's a different level of professionalism, which is very exciting for me. And I can specialize myself in the fibromyalgia, chronic pain, chronic illness uh, world, which I feel like I'm an advocate. I'm like, yes. So I'm really excited about that. As a yoga teacher, your scope is more like, um, we can just do a little bit of stretching. You know, we can't really give you a treatment plan, but, um, so that's how it all started. So I was looking for something myself to relieve the pain and symptoms, to relieve the pain, really. Yeah. The other symptoms, I didn't see how yoga could help with others. I didn't see how yoga could help with anxiety or uh, chest or, well, pain, yes, but fatigue, insomnia, all this other stuff. So I was doing it for that. And I found yoga with Adrienne, who's lovely, and she's still going after all Love these her. years. Love her. Still going, yeah. And she was, it was great. I couldn't do the whole 20 minute class. I took breaks. I didn't do it every day. I was very relaxed with myself and just let it be an unfold, an unfolding, a practice, um, ex exploration. Similarly, Facebook advertised again <laughs> to me, they must love me to go to India on a two week trip to learn about yoga. And it was only, it was really cheap because it was like, for university students or something. I don't know exactly how it was, but I wasn't at uni at this time anymore. But somehow I got it. I don't know. The universe conspired in my favor and I went to India. Everyone else were kind of yoga teachers or or like me as well, just interested. It wasn't a yoga teacher training. It was a cultural immersion. It was like, so uni students in India and uni students in England could like chat. And it was like the government of India and the government of England, like being friends and sharing this cultural experience. And they could also come to the UK and learn our cultural stuff. So it was really fun. And there were lectures and real medical doctors came in and talked about how they have to self-fund these trials of using yoga and yoga, not only the physical practice of yoga, yoga is so vast. Think of yoga more like a lifestyle, a philosophy. Using yoga to manage, heal, and each doctor that came to speak to us had a different specialty. They were telling me about prostate cancer. They were telling me about autism. They were telling me about like, diabetes. And my little sort of in comparison, uh, I don't want to say little, but for me personally, I felt like my little chronic pain situation was like, well, if you, if you're doing that with that, like with cancer, like, wow. So I was drawn to them and I was going to them whenever I could, they were leaving the lecture and going off. And I was like, wait, can I have your email or something? I want to speak to you, not looking for treatment, but I just want to speak to you. I just want to be in your energy. Just tell me that healing happens. Tell me that you, and it's not the doctor healing them or the, even the yoga healing them. It's yoga as a tool to come home to yourself, reconnect with yourself, love yourself, forgive the past, set yourself free. And then the disease, which is spelled um, dis hyphen ease becomes an ease again an ease and you're flowing and so that was when I was just sitting there like mind I was front row everyone else was at the back I was just like this at the doctor like oh my god also because I had a bit of a toxic relationship with doctors in general I felt like they didn't get it and they didn't want to help me and these were not just the Ayurvedic doctors Ayurveda is an Indian medicine ancient Indian medicine with herbs and this kind of thing 
they, they were real medical doctors. And um, the problem was the pharmaceutical companies wouldn't fund their little study. So they might have had 20 men with prostate cancer significantly reduce their cancer to the point of being healed. But 20 is not enough to make big claims, mm. but they couldn't get 2,000 people, 20,000 people, because the pharmacy were like, we're not um, going to fund that, which then led me down a path of what I call like the agenda and um, other people's, um, what's the word? Well, agenda. Their motivations and motivations, money, yeah. uh, sponsorships, and um, why natural healing medicine and self healing isn't the medicine and then the pharmacy is the alternate medicine why is the pharmacy the medicine um it's actually not the original medicine so yeah so that led me down that path as well mm. so it was very transformative that was only two weeks i went back to india four times <laughs> to just keep learning keep getting more of that stuff love that so you really immerse yourself in it mm. so it is, just is, clicked from me yeah is india where you did your training then to 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 teach yoga yeah the for, the second time and the third time i went back i took more training and um i really wanted to learn about anatomically and physically like a physiotherapist with stretches how to support in relieving and that was where i was coming from when i made the yoga for fibromyalgia youtube channel it was in relieving the symptoms just like a painkiller does just to relieve them so down to here, instead of up here in a 10 out of 10 terrible flare, just down a bit so that we can do the inner work of the journaling or the meditation or the, who am I really? What do I want from my life? What's my soul mission? What's my purpose? Do I love myself? Can I forgive my mom for that awful thing? And like, just relieve the pain enough because if we're up here in pain, 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 it makes the inner work much more difficult. So that was the YouTube channel. And I myself was suffering and in a lot of pain as I created that YouTube channel. Um, because I, I thought this was a good moment to, to teach. So if I taught a class on fibro fog, I had fibro fog when I taught that class. And wow. it, was, it was synchronized and I loved it. And it was great. And I would be all annoyed at the camera and the lighting, but I'd also be like, well, it's very authentic, you yeah. know, um i couldn't remember what stretch came next but i was like well the people watching me get it they get it so i don't need to perform i'm not a performer yeah that's brilliant so how did you get from going on this like journey of discovery and learning from these doctors and finding out that for yourself yoga is something that you wanted to explore for yourself to wanting to share that knowledge with other people and help other people? Mm -hmm. I'd say um, there was lots of different factors and even coming away from an um, being an English teacher and identifying with being an English teacher and letting myself be a yoga teacher was a big shift that actually taught me as well about letting go of the diagnosis and being someone who doesn't have a diagnosis anymore. That was huge. Mm. And both things kind of were happening simultaneously. And I found I was in yoga positions where I was teaching in resorts, really beautiful, sure, wonderful, but these weren't my people. Um, I found that I didn't want to just teach a big class, with, whether there was five people, 10 people or 50 people and making money from it, but we were all just doing yoga. That's why I don't even do, have you tried yoga? Have you do, do yoga? I do yoga. I, that's not my, my thing. It's like, um, I would be happy to open the door and everybody's doing their own complete different thing. And in the yoga world, this is, um, teachers like kind of whine and moan about it. Like, oh, this student in my class just started doing their own thing. How rude. Whereas I think, how great. They're connecting with themselves. You're leading everyone to do this, but they decide to go into child's pose on the floor. Wonderful. Let them. Um, and so I had to go and teach different groups and people to realize what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And naturally people with pain and issues were coming, were drawn to me, even in a beautiful resort where one-to-one -one wasn't a thing. They were coming to me. Hey, can we do like a one-to-one? -one I've got frozen shoulder. I've got this lower back issue. Even I was finding friends, boyfriends, everybody had something. And then 
this is kind of psychological, but I had the role of like the fixer. And in fibromyalgia, I do notice that with the empath, with the one who wants to help everybody, it can be like this. And it's not only women. Um, with the one who probably hasn't got very good boundaries because we want to help everybody all the time because that fills up our cup. So naturally, I use yoga as a tool to be the empath and help everybody and push yoga slightly onto people, not clients, but definitely friends, family, boyfriend, and be like, okay, he's got this lower back. He had a big hernia. And I'd be like, if you're choosing not to do the yoga for yourself, you're choosing to keep having your situation. Like, I, I can't help you if you don't want to do it. And he was like, I don't want to do it. And so <laughs> you can imagine how that could cause tension. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I know what's going to help you. Why don't you want to help yourself? Yes, right. But now I've let go of that so much because now in my coach, now I'm a coach, not a yoga teacher, mm -hmm. that I can just draw on the tools of yoga that if my one-to-one -one client or my group membership clients say they are dealing with this like imposter syndrome or I don't know this, um, let's make it specific, this flair, I can say, are you looking for a tool to to release this flare like before i just say do like do i don't say do this but i would say are you looking and if they say yes i am i'm looking for something i could incorporate maybe into my morning routine then i'll say awesome 10 minutes this 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 take it or leave it but it's not a it's not a prescription because i'm not a health coach or a fitness coach and that's what people think at the beginning that i'm going to give you yoga like it's all about yoga yoga is not even on my instagram anymore because yoga is a tool um that I, um, hmm, there was a word I was thinking of, not navigate. Oh, it's gone. But just make them like, it's free. It's within you to slow down your breathing, focus on your leg. It's free. It's there. It's available. It's, it's just like there. So if you want it, like it's there, it's there to tap into. But I'm also doing EFT tapping, which is a different technique, not related to yoga or um, journaling and, and sort of kind of life coaching exercises that are not related to yoga, but it all kind of goes together. Yeah. If you change what yoga means as a philosophy, then stretches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I am personally getting a lot of benefits from yoga um, recently. So I, um, in addition to fibro, I've had uh, ongoing chronic issues with my back since like the age of 13. Um, and very recently, I was able to get um, some steroid injections in my lower back to help um, basically give me the opportunity um, without any other pain medication because I've been on a absolute mission in the last 18 months to come off all medication and and mm. you know really cleanse my body and go through a new haul of pain management and approach to because previously yeah, it's not it's... been it's not been a healthy one or a good one um mm. and I'm finding yoga really really beneficial I'm doing it like three times a week at the moment but in addition to that I'm doing the journaling you know, it's mm -hmm. about what I'm putting into my body as much as what I'm doing with my body um, yes. and my mind. So there's a huge, there's, there's so much, there's so much that you can do. And by the signs of it, your, yes. your new business like, I don't venture know. is like, so you, cause you've, des you've redesigned your business and what, what you're doing. That's right. You? Yeah. Like if you, I don't know if you noticed it, the YouTube chat, uh, the YouTube videos, I always had like a, a PS and then like a little hint of metaphysical um psychological mind body like if the class was on painful shoulders i'd be like p.s the shoulders symbolize this and this what are you holding on to da, 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 da. and i was just like trying the youtube community like are you gonna flip at me are you gonna tell me to go home are you gonna say no we just want the real physical or are you gonna be open to that but it turned out people were really open to that thus the membership was born the membership is really all about that. It's all about the metaphysical and the, okay, the shoulder pain is manifesting itself because we can look at the physical and we can do the stretches. Okay. Or if it was a rash, we can do the lifestyle change. Maybe there was a food. We can do that. But what is within, and I like to say the issue within the tissue, what is the issue within that tissue that is making it come out over and over? Because it's not normally just one time. 
we get recurrent sinus infections, recurrent UTIs, recurrent migraines. Then we get diagnosed with chronic migraine with no treatment option, recurrent widespread pain. Like it's all recurrent. So what little pattern is going around and around and around continuously making it manifest, create? Now with that, there is a, an understanding that I need to take some responsibility, if not all responsibility, because my body manifests. My body is a manifester. It's a, like a, a, it just, it's naturally creating all the time. And that can be triggering. And I probably wasn't ready 10 years ago when the doctor in his own way was suggesting that I could make changes and suggesting that my body was a manifester, but just not in those words. Mm. I was like, trigger, don't tell me that. I'm not changing, I don't need to change. My circumstances did this to, I'm a victim of my circumstances. Huge mindset belief. So then, um, so the membership was born based on me almost already knowing in my YouTube videos that I wanted this to go a step further than just doing yoga. Let's do yoga. Let's just relieve our symptoms. Then what? What happens when you relieve our symptoms so that we can actually self heal? It was hard for me because I wasn't self healed at the point at that time. So I didn't want to be like, um making uh, claims or i don't know something like that but today i don't i'm self-healed that i don't make claims that my yoga class is going to heal you i do not believe that 100 percent at all because mm. you can do the yoga and not heal if you believe that healing doesn't happen or it can't happen for you or your body can't you're incapable you're not worthy so many mindset beliefs there and then that is where the membership was born and and we go into all of that cool so you've referenced um membership quite a bit what does that look like and can we have like an actual visual of how somebody goes about becoming a member of your yes self absolutely yeah self healer society yes yes it's called the self healer society and the website is just that the self healer society.com and just quickly i'd love to just share that it used to be called fibromyalgia healers and you did ask me that earlier but then i went off on tangents and i realized that that was me playing small because i was too scared to openly admit that healing happens across the board and i was putting myself in this little box of like okay well i know we can heal fibro because i've done it but then I was like, but I've healed my anxiety, my irritable bowel syndrome, my chronic fatigue syndrome. So why am I putting myself in the fibromyalgia like, box? So rebranding and changing the name of the website, all the colors and all that fun stuff, my Instagram was really part of me evolving as a self healer and as a coach as well. So, um, and you'll find that other women in this space who have self healed, I spoke to one the other day, have the sa same kind of block. Like, can I really tell people that we can do that? I'm like, well, you did it. So yes. So yeah, so that I'm really when, proud of the when name. you say when you say self healed, is that because mm -hmm. um, like have you got a measurement of time that you haven't had like the symptoms of fibro for? Yeah, I mean a flare, as in like you really all know what flares are here. Yeah. I'd say my last flare was Christmas January. Brilliant. And then I I haven't had symptoms since then that's incredible so yeah so then when i might have a brain fog moment or a headache or this or that we have to remember that symptoms are normal and that all humans everywhere have symptoms because we're all still learning and evolving and growing and maybe i look at my computer for eight hours like blah, 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 and i'm gonna get some pain in my head but it yeah. was a really big mindset mindset shift for me to realize that i can be totally self-healed of chronic diagnosis and still like a normal person get some symptoms bed of stiffness bed of this bed of that because we forget that actually our body needs to talk to us just like if you touch something hot and you burn yourself and then you get a blister it's exactly the same like it has to come out somewhere and i've still got things going on within the tissues to heal always we all have um so my healing process is ongoing in terms of emotional healing and like stepping into this woman now that i'm not this 17 year old girl in this broken home with all this mess like i'm a woman now but the physical, if we're talking about like physically, if a doctor would touch my points or do my blood or whatever, he would not give me any diagnosis. Like my IBS, I don't bloat, I don't have constipation, I don't have all of that. So that's what I would say in, in self-healing. I use that term because I'm not a healer. I don't heal, cure, or do any of that. And no healer did that to me. 
even if I, I de definitely believe in Reiki healing and stuff like that, it's still not the person healing you with their hands. It's the source of energy, just healing in general, because healing is all over the world. But anyway, that's another tangent. Yeah. From and it's you putting in the work, isn't it? It's you putting in, yes. in that time and that energy to yourself. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Great. So yeah. Could you, could you, could you show, show me and anyone watching um, where to find you? Okay. Like. Are we here? Can you see? We're here. Awesome. So as you can see, the self healer society.com is my site, my public site where you can find all the information and you can just join the weekly email list, but real truth i don't always get around to emailing but like that's something i'm working on as a businesswoman um so here you can read all the cool stuff all the good stuff that is there everything about what i do and what i have testimonials from existing members Great. so if you went to membership excuse the slow internet this is the page that's going to tell you all about the membership but it still doesn't really say everything because there's just so much that i just didn't want to go on and on and on forever but it mm -hmm. really gives you the the what what the value is and then like physically what you get zoom calls a, a private group space a vault of 200 classes like all of the stuff but more important than the stuff is how it's going to really um support you so like here's a sneak peek inside this is quite good so this is classes i've done or talks we've done or coaching we've done chronic symptoms and their relation to yoga philosophy so using yoga philosophy not just the stretches to talk like the chakras if anybody's heard of chakras let's give you a quick example like um, the root chakra could be linked with anxiety so if we use root chakra related protocols we can support our healing of our anxiety so that it would be that um what the meaning behind the symptom is and what your body is trying to communicate this is the metaphysical i'm talking about this is okay my wrist and only my right wrist keeps hurting like okay the physical stuff we can look at that but what else what's my wrist what's this symbolizing maybe the wrist symbolizes my ability to give and receive what am i not receiving in my life what am i refusing maybe someone's trying to love me but i just keep pushing them away pushing them away because i'm wounded inside and this is maybe what we need to heal. When we heal that, the wrist pain goes away. So that is the metaphysical stuff. And by the way, all my metaphysical knowledge or most of it comes from a wonderful writer um, and speaker and teacher called Louise Hay, who has now passed, but she has some amazing teachings. I definitely recommend. In fact, she was the turning point for me in my healing journey, reading her books. Um, okay, so any of the buttons, this frequently asked questions here, any of the buttons that make you, you know, join or pay or whatever I'm in, will take you to the sign up page. This is the annual page, but there's also monthly. So you can press here, prefer monthly. Mm -hmm. And this will take you to the, the page. Um, and once you sign up here, again, this explains everything that you've got. You just immediately enter the membership. So this is what it will look like when you enter the membership. Again, it still looks like my site, yeah. um, but you're in the vault now. So this is the vault of 200 classes that I'm adding to as and when. You And when you click on each one, you then go into a sort of category with with things to click. It's like a course. Mm. It's a little bit like a course, but it's very go at your own pace. We have self healers kits. Self healers kits are educational classes taught by myself and guest teachers. I'm now inviting guest teachers in. Like we had this one yoga therapy with chronic pain expert Elaine. She was amazing. So she taught us how to use yoga therapy for that. Um, so these are what well, I would call educational classes that are on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Whereas the self healers group coaching calls are more about the questions the members give me in our private space. Like, how can I feel good about myself and carry on when I'm right in the middle of a flare? What can I do? Not just how can I physically support myself um, and also all the metaphysical stuff. So these are the replays of the live course. So some people can't make it live because we have members all around the world, Australia, America, uh, India, and Europe, all over the world. We've got here my signature course, Self-Healing is My Birthright, 21-Day Meditation Journey. This started off as an email course for free um, as I was playing and, and trying and testing the water, seeing if this is actually something that people are interested in, learning how to self-heal. And the feedback was amazing. Yes, people want this. There is a demand. So it's there in the membership. 
Um, it's also available to buy separately, but it's like more than 200 pounds. So you might as well join the membership for 20 bucks and get it all included. Oh, wow. So yeah. then these are all the physical practices. So if you want to practice on your mat, you'd go here, self heal on your mat. And then all the practices that are on the mat are here. And they're all in order of the time. So you start with some nice five minute practices and you can build up um, and, and so on and so forth. We've That's got brilliant. Class, right? It looks like such an accessible like you've got everything it, it's so well thought out you really have thought of Thank everything and everyone that, with that it looks amazing it took a long long old time but i'm very happy with it we've got the meditation part the the bed classes in bed classes seated so right now i'm based in england as i continue to evolve and grow and move i'm going to be speaking with ayurvedic doctors i'm going to be speaking with chinese medicine experts i'm going to be speaking with that same doctor i'm going to find him i can't remember his name but i will find him and get him on a zoom podcast get him in my membership like tell like i don't have one modality of self-healing i don't say it's yoga or it's this or it's diet or it's this or it's paleo or it's vegan or whatever it's not it's whatever works for you to reconnect with yourself and your soul mission your purpose why you are here on this planet in the life that you that you have where you were diagnosed with chronic illness like what is the point of it all there is a point and um in unearthing that point maybe it's to heal it and then you do something similar to me i am finding that a lot of the members in my membership and my one-to-ones are finding in themselves that their purpose is then to be a self-healer coach of some description to help and support other people because they've realized that crystal healing works for them and then they will attract women in that same or men I, i'm not really i'm not when i say women all the time it's only because i'm a woman who self-healed my own woman body that's mm -hmm. the only reason i wouldn't like coach a man unless yeah. he was open to the fact that i don't have experience in healing a man's body yeah and um and so, yeah, I am finding that. So, so that's why I just want to like, what I want, the self healer society in my big vision, it's just the place where all the healers who have healed themselves, share their stuff, the doctors share their stuff, the, the functional, the like mystical, just all the things because it all works because healing happens. And it's not about trying this and trying that. It's just like finding your one thing or maybe a few things and to help you come home and to help you reconnect and to help you shed the diagnosis. Because on some level, you needed that diagnosis. I needed that diagnosis at that time of my life. I required it. I had a, a story going on there, a situation. It fulfilled that purpose. And as I evolved, I no longer needed it anymore. And I had to let it go in order to free myself so love that that's the vault included as well as the private group space i decided to not go on facebook i decided to do my private group space in this page here i have no judgment against current facebook groups that are out there that are all about supporting and um, and it is great to offload it is great to have a good old moan and i allow don't think i don't allow moaning and stuff in my membership but it's what we can heal from it. So I love now the girls, the women who have been in my membership for several months, you can see in their own phrasing of things that instead of just, oh, my husband did this and I've got this pain and this is this end. And just like what I call energy dumping, you're just dumping your energy onto everyone else who is there to see you and hear you and hold space for you. But it affects them as we are empaths and we take on other people's energy. Now their vocabulary is changing to more like I'm experiencing this, 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 but I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the lesson there. And this is how I'm like, this is my plan moving forward. And I wanted to share that with you. So then everyone else is like, wow, I didn't, don't feel like I got energy dumped on. I feel like you taught me a lesson and I'm learning from you. Like I also have that situation with my husband and this and this pain. And now we're learning from each other. And it's not like Sarah's the leader and we're all just like help. It's like we're all helping each other. I learn from my members every day. They are amazing. We've got like one woman, she self-healed Crohn's disease. She hasn't had Crohn's symptoms in five years. Um, I That's tell incredible. you stories from all of them. And it's not because of me. It's because we're all on our own path, healing ourselves. And then we come together and just, I feel like we're a revolution. Like I talked about the agenda. We're the revolution, the wild women, the ones who are like dancing around a fire. We're not, you can't tell us that we're chronic. You can't tell us that we can't heal. You can't tell us that we are limited in this box and that's the way it is. No, won't stand for it. I love that.
a fierce force of females brilliant (laughs) yes absolutely and then for those who are seeking more one-to-one because in the group coaching calls i can't specifically get into the one person's um specific situation um like if their wrist hurts i can give them that specific metaphysical yoga stuff then i offer one-to-one brilliant 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 thank you so much Thank you so much for holding space for me. I feel so good. Like I think we don't brag enough and everybody should come on your podcast to brag, share their truth, share their light. Like it shouldn't be a bad thing. Absolutely. Couldn't agree mm. more. Couldn't agree more. And um, yeah, there are, there's, there's so much to be gained from other people's experiences and I what I'm really enjoying about the people that I'm meeting through this platform and the people that like I'm lucky enough to be connected with is that I take something from it each time so I'm taking something from each guest so if I am then I know that anybody who picks up and watches it they definitely will be and that's yeah that's the whole it's just I'm I'm really really enjoying enjoying this process and I'm so yeah I'm just, and potentially yeah, I'm, you are being guided each person you are finding and you are asking do you want to come on my podcast there's a reason because i don't believe in coincidences so each person is guiding you in your own self-healing journey yeah absolutely yeah that's what i mean I'm, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of something from everybody and just adding it to my toolbox and that's that's great and that's 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 exactly what i think like this chronic community should be about and i mm-hmm much sense today but no I you are know that absolutely that's okay. <laughs> you can make it yes <laughs> it is okay space. and like you're saying absolutely. with your when you were doing recording videos and you were having a foggy day it's authentic mm-hmm. so like yeah so absolutely those are no days, yeah but it's uh yeah it's brilliant so thank you thank no, you so you, much yeah. for making time for me and um and best of luck with um it's so great to see how much you've evolved like there's been a real like the evolution of Sarah Harvey it's an amazing yes I like the word evolution and there's been heartbreak you know there's been um leaving countries here and breaking up with a long-term partner all while doing this it's like I don't want anyone to think that it's well it's easy for her because she doesn't have kids and she doesn't have this and she doesn't have that there's been a real trauma real heartbreak but healing happens anyway so you're amazing you're a true inspiration thank you so much for sharing (laughs) sharing everything that you shared today has been brilliant you're amazing thank you